Okay, so this is part two of my Techno EB48SL uh, build series. So as you can see, I have the uh, front and rear gearboxes assembled and most of the rear uh, suspension all put together. So um, I'll just go over uh, some of the steps that I've gone through so far. So since doing the um, diffs, once you put those together, then you have to install them in the gearboxes. And they actually do a, a pretty good job of telling you uh, what to do regarding shimming. So they give you two shims per gearbox. And uh, there's a little instruction set here that tells you that to basically test out different shim combinations. So one on the left side, one on the right side, both on either side. Uh, and just figure out what gives you reasonable gear mesh. Um, so it's actually possible that you won't need both shims, that you only need to use one shim. And it turns out for me, uh, I guess because of the variation from lot to lot of different moldings uh, or uh, of the gearboxes, that you might not even be able to fit two shims inside the gearbox with uh, the diffs and everything fully assembled. So it turns out for me that I only needed one shim on the uh, gear side of the diff and that was it. That's all I needed. And I get plenty of fine mesh for both front and rear gear boxes. Now, if you are building your own, you may find that the particular uh, uh, molded gearbox that you have maybe has a slightly different tolerance. So you may have to use a shim in a different place. So just make sure to check that out for both front and rear gear boxes. So, um, yeah, so you put that together, you put the shock tower on the front gear box and then you work on the rear gearbox. And the whole rear, uh, let's see, that's parts bag D, and then you open up parts bag uh, E, and you put up the uh, rear wing mount. And this is actually a pretty cool wing mount. So they give you several options for adjusting uh, downforce and the center of pressure. So this bit here that the wing actually mounts onto that piece right there, it has four mounting holes. And basically you can move the wing up or down or forward or backward, depending on which mounting hole you use. And if you move the wing up, that'll give you a bit more uh, downforce. If you move the wing uh, forward, that'll move the center of pressure forward to give you uh, basically more front traction than rear traction and vice versa if you move the wing rearward towards the back. So the stock setting is with the wing high and towards the rear and with a four degree tilt and you adjust the tilt by adjusting these two guys here these cross members now these cross members slot uh, into the left and right portions of the tower um, or not the tower the the wing mount um, and they're actually the holes that screw into them are offset from the center of these uh, cylinder pieces so you can kind of see here these are the screw holes that you screw through this and into this screw hole and you can mount them either up or down. So you basically, you know, would unscrew these four screws, and just pull this apart, take this and twit and just rotate it so that the hole is facing up or the hole is facing down. And you do that for both the front and the rear. And depending on which combination you choose, you can basically adjust the angle of the rear wing. So that's kind of a neat way of adjusting the wing without having to use spacers or anything under uh, these guys here. So that's a neat little touch. Um, everything goes together, you know, pretty simplistically. There's nothing too complicated here. Uh, when you get to bag F, there's a whole bunch of stuff you have to do there, which basically this page here is bag F, but it's a lot of different things. You put together the rear sway bar, uh, you mount that, you mount the front rear arm mount and the rear rear arm mount and the arms and the uh, mud flaps and all that stuff. So what's interesting about the arm mounts is that both the front rear arm mount and the rear rear arm mount, so that's your C block and your D block respectively, have inserts for the hinge pin. And that's where this parts tree comes in. It comes with all these different inserts and each insert basically sets the, the hinge pin hole in a different location. And so depending on which one you use, you can adjust your anti-squat and your rear toe in. 
and I believe the C block is used for adjusting the anti squat, and the D block is for rear towing, or actually, you know what? Yeah, I think that's right. Or it may be a combination of the two. In any case, you get plenty of adjustments for rear anti squat and rear towing based on these inserts. Uh, I still have to read a little bit more closely about how uh, um, or which settings give you uh, more or less anti-squat or toe-in. And they do have a piece back here in the back of the manual for the setup sheet that kind of shows you the different um, orientations or the different part uh, types. So some parts have one little dot on them. Other parts have two dots. Some of them are in a diagonal. Some of them are in a corner. Some of them are in the center, etc. So depending on which one you use and how you use it, you can adjust your, your rear uh, geometry. So that might be a little confusing and uh, you just have to pay very close attention to where exactly you're placing these mounts. If you flip these, you know, if you move, if you mount this one so that this dot is facing upwards, for example, it's because you're not paying attention, then you're gonna have different left and right geometries. So pay very close attention to that and exactly which among these parts you're using. Okay, um, let's see, that's basically where I am right now. Um, what I do like about this is that it comes with uh, droop screws for the suspension arms. So that's uh, this little screw here that you put into the bottom of the arm. And right now I have it screwed all the way tight. Um, basically what happens is when you mount the gearbox on the chassis, these, these little flaps right here are what the droop screw touches. So if I loosen that droop screw out, then basically uh, the screw head will, will hit these little flaps here at full droop and it will reduce the amount of droop that I have. So this is a cool feature that A-scale buggies have that 110 scale buggies don't have. So in a 110 scale buggy, if I want to adjust the front or rear droop, I have to take the whole shock apart and put in down travel limiters on the inside of the shock, uh, which means I have to, you know, because I have to take the, the shock apart, I have to throw out the oil and then refill the oil each time I want to adjust the droop. With an A-scale buggy, um, all you got to do is just screw this in or out a little bit, depending on how much droop you want to adjust into or out of the car, and then that's it. That's all you have to do. There's no taking apart of shocks or anything like that. So I really like that about the this scale of buggy, and I really wish that uh, one tenth scale chassis designs would try to incorporate that in some way, um, because it, it just makes it so much easier to tune your suspension. Uh, the only problem is that because this is a screw, it's hard to get it perfectly accurate. Um, you know, at least with putting down travel limiters in your shocks, they are fixed sizes, and so you know exactly how many of them you have in the shock and exactly how much droop you have. With something like this, you basically have to uh, take the shocks at least out of uh, out of the arms, disconnect them and move, move them to the side and just let the arms droop and try to measure, you know, how much droop you have off of the ground from a fixed height or something and then adjust the screws on both sides and then measure on both sides how much droop you have to make sure that you have the same left and right droop. So it's probably a little bit more finicky in terms of uh, making sure you adjust it correctly and evenly from left to right, um, but it's a lot easier to actually adjust it. So um, that's kind of neat. Okay, so uh, after this step, I have to basically put in uh, the rear universals, the rear hub carriers, and then from that point, what do I go to next? Uh, the rear turnbuckles, do 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 do. And then eventually, yes, I get to the front gearbox and then I have to do all this stuff all over again for the front. Um, and then after that, what do we do? The front steering blocks, uh, the front steering rack, and then we mount everything onto the chassis. So um, I'll probably make the next video somewhere around, uh, maybe after I do the, the steering rack because the front gearbox assembly is pretty similar to the rear. Um, so I'll probably make a video around here somewhere and then we'll go from there. Okay. So that's it for now. Uh, and yeah, thanks for watching.